Welcome to Electra Online. Here's our next example of how to use the mesh analysis method to find the currents in the circuit. Our step one would be to assign currents for each branch, but as we get more of these loops, there's going to be a lot of branches. So we could say on the first step, we can leave that until the end. We'll just make that an optional step for now. And we'll go direct to assigning the mesh currents for each of the loops, for each of the meshes, I should say. And we could say that uh, we have our first one over here. Let's call this I1. Here we have our second one. Let's call this our I2. And there's our third one. Let's call this I3. So that makes it a little bit easier by just stepping, skipping the first step. The next thing we want to do is apply the Kirchhoff voltage law to obtain the equation. Since we have three meshes, we're going to need three equations. We're going to go around each of the meshes and add up all the voltage rises and drops. Starting with the first one, if we start at this corner right here, we go across the battery, that's a 16 volt rise. We'll leave off the units, that makes the equations a lot cleaner. Then we come down this way, we have a 4 volt, we have a drop across this resistor according to I1, but notice I3 is in the opposite direction, that would be voltage rise. So we write minus 4 times I1, but then we have to subtract from that I3. Notice that a minus times a minus makes that a voltage rise relative to I3. Coming around the corner, going across the 2 ohm resistor, that is a minus 2 times the current I1, but it'll be a voltage rise relative to I2, so we have to subtract I2 from that. And then we come all the way around to get back to the initial point, that means that is equal to zero. There's our first equation. Second equation, let's start at this corner right here. We'll go around the loop this way. From here to there is a voltage drop relative to I2, minus 2 times I2, but then I have subtracted I1 from it because it will be a voltage rise relative to I1, minus I1. Again, this minus times this minus makes it a plus. Around the corner, across the 8 ohm resistor, that's a voltage drop, minus 8 times I2, but I3 is in the opposite direction, that would be voltage rise, therefore we subtract I3 from that, again, that's a 3. Again, the minus times the minus makes that a plus. Went across the 2 ohm resistor, the 8 ohm resistor, now across the battery, but they go from the positive to the negative end, that's a volt, 40 volt drop. That adds up to zero, so we get back to the same point. There's our second equation. Third equation, let's start from this point right here. And it doesn't really matter what point, you can grab any arbitrary point, it'll never make any difference. Coming around the corner, across the 6 ohm resistor, there's only one current there minus 6 times I3. Come around the corner this way, there's an 8 ohm resistor, we have a voltage drop relative to I3, minus 8 times I3, but I2 is in the opposite direction, that the voltage rise, minus I2, again this minus times this minus makes that a plus. Coming across the 4 ohm resistor, that's minus 4 times I3, but we have I1 in the opposite direction, that's the voltage rise. We subtract I1 from that, minus times the minus makes it a plus. All the way around adds up to zero. So now we have our three equations and three unknowns, I1, I2, and I3. The beauty of this method is that even though we have many more branches, it reduces it to just three meshes and three mesh currents. That makes it a lot easier to solve the problem. In order to solve the problem, we need to rewrite. The next step would be to reduce the set of the linear equations into a simple set of equations where we have I1, I2, and I3 only appearing once in each equation. And we'll write the constants on the other side, the equal sign. Minus 4I1, minus 2I1, minus 6I1, minus 2 times a minus I2, that's a plus I2, that's plus 2I2, minus times a minus, that's a plus, plus 4I3, equals, bring the 16 across, that becomes a minus 16. Here we took our first equation and rewrote into a simple format where we have I1, I2, I3 in order like that. Second equation, minus times a minus, that's plus 2I1, 2I1, minus 2I2, minus 8I2, that's minus 10I2, and we have a minus times a minus, that's plus 8I3, equals, bring the 40 across, that becomes a positive 40 on the right side, the equal sign. Third equation, minus times a minus, that's plus 4i1, 
a plus 8i2 for i3, minus 6, minus 8, that's minus 14, minus 4 is minus 18i3 equals and 0 on the other side of the equal sign. Now we have our three equations and three unknowns in a more simple, straightforward format, in a linear format, so to speak. Now we can go ahead and solve for that by first getting the determinant. D is equal to, and what we do here, we write the matrix with the coefficients of I1, I2, and I3. Get minus 6, 2, and 4. I think I'll make it a little bit bigger. There we go. Uh, 2, minus 10, and 8. And 4, 8, and minus 18. To find the determinant, the easy way to do that is to add the two columns again on the right side here. So we rewrite this as minus 6, 2, and 4, 2, minus 10, and 8. Now we're going to multiply the diagonal elements in this direction, add them all up. It helps sometimes to write the, these little lines in here. You can see you're going this direction. And then we're going to subtract when we multiply these diagonal elements like that. D is therefore equal to... 10 times this, that's 180, times 6, that's 6, that's 1,080, and that would be a minus 1,080, because I have three minus signs, a minus 1,080. 4 times 8 times 8, that's plus 64. 8 times 2, that's 16, that's also plus 64. So we added the three products of the elements in diagonal like this. Now we subtract from that the products of the diagonal elements in this direction. 4 times 4 is 8, times 10 is minus 80. 8 times 8 is 64, times 6. 64 times 6, that's 360, that's 384, minus 384. And then we have minus 18 times 4, that's 36, that's 72, minus 72. Notice that this negative sign will turn those into positives. Now we better use a calculator to add all those up. We get 1,080, put a minus sign in front of that, plus 64, plus 64, plus 80, plus 384, and plus 72. That gives me a minus 416 for the determinant. Now, to find I1, I2, and I3, what we do in each case to find I1, Let's, we find the following matrix. I1 can be found by taking the very same matrix, but replacing the first column by the constants on the right side, the equal sign. So instead of writing minus 6, 2, and 4, we write minus 16, 40, and 0. Minus 16, 40, and 0. But we repeat the other two columns. 2, minus 10, and 8. 4, 8, and minus 18. And then we repeat those two columns again over here, minus 16, 40, and 0, 2, minus 10, and 8. And now we can go ahead, just like we did before, we multiply these elements together, those elements together, and those elements together, then subtract, we multiply these elements, these elements, and these elements together. And then when we take the result of that and divide by the determinant this, uh, minus 416, then we get the current I1, the mesh current I1. Let's go ahead and do that. This is equal to, I probably need a calculator for this, that's 160 times 18. That's 2880. And minus, 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 so it's minus 2880. Multiply those together, we get zero because of this. And then we get 160 times 8. 160 times 8 equals plus 1,280 because all the signs are positive. And then we multiply these together, we subtract. This is definitely zero, so put a zero there. When we multiply this, we get a minus 64 times 16. 64 times 16, that was 1,024. And then we multiply these together, that's 80 times 18. And we put a negative sign, minus 1,440. Remember that this negative sign changes the signs in here. When we add all that up, we get 
2880 with a minus sign in front of that, plus 1280, plus 1024, and plus 1440, 864. And to find I1, we're going to take this number and divide by D, which is minus 416. For the second current, for second mesh current I2, I take again the same matrix as before, but now replace the middle column by the constants minus 16, 40, and 0. Middle column becomes minus 16, 40, and 0. The first column is minus 6, 2, and 4. The third column, 4, 8, and minus 18. And then again, to multiply all that out, we're going to add the columns again, minus 6, 2, and 4, and the minus 16, 40, and 0. Sometimes that helps to use a slightly different color to draw the diagonal lines. Multiply those elements together, multiply those elements, and multiply those elements, and then subtract. And let's use a different color going in the other direction. Multiply these together, these, and those. Hopefully with the colors it makes it a little bit easier to see how we're multiplying the elements. Let's go ahead and do that now. In this direction, we have a minus times a minus that makes it a plus. 6 times 40 times 18. That gives us, wow, let me try that again. 6 times 40, that's 240, times 18 equals 4,320. Multiply those elements together that with a minus. That's 16 times 8 times 4. That's a minus 512. Multiplying those elements together, we get 0. Now we're going to subtract the product of these elements. That's 160 times 4. 160 times 4 equals that's 640. Everything is positive. Multiplying those elements together, we get 0. Multiplying those elements together, minus times a minus gives us a plus. That's 18 times 2 times 16 equals 576. 4320. Minus 512, minus 640, and minus 576 equals. That gives us 2,592. Moving on to the third one. Now we're going to replace the third column by the constants minus 16, 40, and 0. Minus 6, 2, and 4. The second column, 2 minus 10 and 8. And the third column is now going to be replaced by minus 16, 40, and 0. Now we add the first two columns again, minus 6, 2, and 4, 2 minus 10 and 8. And then again, using a different color, because I think that makes it easier to see, we're going to multiply these elements together, these and these, and then we're going to subtract when we multiply these elements together, those and those. All right. Probably need a calculator for some of these. Well, the first one will be zero. The second one is eight times four, that's 320, and it's a positive, plus 320. The third one, that's 16 times 16, 16 squared, 256, with a negative sign, negative 256. Subtract from that, we we'll multiply these diagonals together. That's 40 times 16, that's uh, 640. And two negative signs, that makes it a plus 640. The next diagonal would be 8 times 40 times 6, that's 1920, with a negative sign. Negative 1920. And the last is plus 0. All right, let's add all those together. 320 minus 256 minus 640, and then minus times a minus is plus 1920. And we get 1344. Now to find the three mesh currents, I1 is equal to the result from matrix 1 divided by the determinant, which in this case would be 864, divided by a minus 416. 864 divided by 416, a negative 416, 
is a minus 2.077 amps. The second mesh current, I2, is equal to, that would be the result of this matrix, divided by the determinant, that's equal to 2592, divided by a minus 416. And what do we get there? 2592 divided by 416, and we get minus 6.231, 6.231 amps. And for the third one, for I3, we get the result of the third matrix divided by the determinant. The third matrix is 1344 divided by minus 416. 1344 divided by 416 equals, and that's a minus 3.231 amps. And there we have the three mesh currents of the circuit. Now what, what do we do when we want to find an individual current? Well, the current along this branch right here is equal to I1. The current along this branch right here is equal to I2 and the current along this branch right here is equal to I3. But what about this current, this current, and this current? Well, the current across the 4 ohm resistor, let's draw, let's call this I sub 4. Well, I sub 4 can be found by taking I1 and subtracting from that I3, because I3 is in the opposite direction, I3. And all you have to do is to find that current is to simply take the results of I1 and subtract from that I3. In this case, that would be equal to a minus 2.077 amp minus a minus 3.231. 3.231 amp. And you can see that that's how you find the other currents in the other three branches. You can find I4, I5, and I6 simply by doing it in the exact same format. So 2.077 Subtract from that uh, 3.231, and we get a positive. That would be, oh, because that's a minus right here. Can't forget the minus. That would be positive 1.154 amp for I sub 4, which would, be the, which would be the branch current across the 4 ohm resistor. Also notice that even though we assume directions for the mesh currents I1, I2, and I3 in a clockwise direction, notice that in each case we got a negative answer, which means that in reality the mesh currents actually flow in the opposite direction, which makes sense in a way because we have a much stronger or much uh, higher voltage source on this side compared to this side, which would tend to force the currents in this direction, and you can see though in I4 the current will go here, and we can find out the current about in I8 in the 8 ohm resistor and 2 ohm resistor by doing it exactly the same way as before. I'll just set up the equations. If you want to know what I5 is equal to and what I6 is equal to, you can again do it like this. I5 would be equal to, in this case it would be I2, the mesh current I2 minus the mesh current I3. And if you want to find I6, that would be equal to I1 minus I2 in the opposite direction. So once you find the mesh currents, it's easy to find the branch currents of every branch in the circuit. And that's how it's done.